This is Romans 11, verse 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Kal halal yahawa bar shem, yahawa shai bar shem, or kar kadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down, teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of God. Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson this morning. It's prophecy concerning the gospel. They are our enemies from the text we just read there. A lot is happening. It's getting really exciting. That scripture, I think it's first, uh, first Peter 4 and 17, that speaks of judgment beginning in the house of Israel. So we see all the agitation that is happening in the house and some as Esau Edom the Edomite the so called white man the oppressor of our souls as he's been laid bare well so are the two thirds Israelites who are blocked from this truth it's becoming crystal clear just who they are we're all in our lot and I was just thinking just waking up this morning just imagine being blocked from the name been blocked from the truth, they're filled up with pride and money and fame only to be destroyed. But the scripture said, let's go back to that, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies. So on this side of the destruction which is to come by our power, this is his movie. He's the director of this movie. His name is Yahweh, meaning he is he to be the existing one. He has an only begotten son whose name is Yahweh Shai, which means he's our savior, redeemer. He's our high priest and mediator, our champion, the captain of our salvation. And they're getting ready to come back, but there's going to be a, a destruction, annihilation on this side by way of nuclear war and uh, serious heat from the chariots, the angelic army. So fire is coming. And so some of our folk, the majority will not make it on this side of the destruction, but they'll be reborn. That's what the scripture is speaking about. If we go back a few verses, we see uh, Romans 11 and 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. That's our savior, Yahweh Shai, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, not the whole world, when I shall take away their sins. So this is the mystery right here. And this is the agitation that we're seeing. Where some people, actually, let's just get, let's just keep reading. I don't know too much of me speaking. Let's get Jude. Because there's one verse here. I've been reading this. Where is it? I thought I marked Jude. But it should be Jude 4. I've read this a few times. I've heard other brief brothers reading this so it's obviously the spirit is moving to for us to keep reading jude 4 for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation this is the frightening a frightening frightening scenario right here we're going to read it because it has nothing new under the sun. We all keep coming back in our lot, but I've just got to read this again. For there are certain men crept in unawares. They know they're Hebrew Israelites. They know who they are. They know the name. They know the truth. But listen to this. Who were before of old ordained. That's to say this bit prepared. You see, to this condemnation. What condemnation? Ungodly men turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness, that's wicked evilness, and denying the only Lord our power and our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So they've, this is their lot to be blocked from the truth. It's a frightening, scary scenario to find yourself. So we can come in all humility, bowing down in fear and reverence to our power equals yes is one and let's just get nine the thing that hath been is it is that shall be and that which is done that which shall be done 
and there is no new thing under the sun. So they keep coming back in their lot. This is what they were doing before, denying our power. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It hath already, it hath been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. So we don't remember what has happened before, but we've been here before. And so this is what this Jude is speaking about. It was preordained, these ungodly men that have sneaked in unawares. But they're performing the works that they've always performed. Ecclesiastes 3, let's go from 14. I know that whatsoever the Most High doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken away from it, taken from it. And the Most High doeth it, that men should fear before him that which hath been is now. And that which is to be hath already been. And the Most High requireth that which is past. That's to say there is no getting away from the wrath, the judgment of our power. But we know he's a righteous God. You see? So you find yourself in your lap. Your mouth is flapping. You know everything. You can't be told. You're in your lot. Men crept in unawares Jeremiah 5 let's go from 20 to 23 declare thee this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah saying hear now this O foolish people and without understanding which have eyes and see not which have ears and hear not verse 22 fear ye not me said the Lord, will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? And though the waves therefore toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. Do you ever consider the waves so high, 30, 40, 50 feet, and yet before they reach the shore, they have to calm right down and go backwards. But this people have a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. That's our people. They don't fear the Lord. That's their lot. They're acting out. Fashion shows, uh, the hip hop mixtapes, you've got the horse riding. On what should be a solemn assembly, this is, this is a Passover. And their general countenance, it includes a marriage arrangement, a counseling, a merchandising cops. You've got people rolling on the floor, Israelite groups fighting. You've got these dark glasses, you've got this clown with his, his hat, his Greekish fashion hat, fashioned for him by Jason, if you know what I'm speaking about in the Maccabees. It just goes on and on and on. Let's go back to Jeremiah here. Let's go now from... 26 because these people they don't fool anyone we're all, we're all back in our lot you're doing what you're supposed to be doing this is the most highest movie jeremiah 5 verse 26 for among my people are found wicked men they lay wait as he that set a snares they set a trap they catch men look at the size of some of these groups they're catching up a lot of the unwanted the rejected it's like a, it's a snare. They're doing it exactly as Esau, Edom, the man going around calling himself the white man. That's the devil that the Bible speaks of. And our folk have joined themselves unto him. That is their lot. That is why, concerning the gospel, they are our enemies. You cannot join with them. They cannot be taught anything. They've got to be left to do what they have to do. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and wax and rich, got huge bank balances. They're doing all, the, all this money thing, all this merchandising. That's why I wish I turned the tables over. But that seems to be lost on them. Buy this, buy that. T-shirts on sale. Everything's on sale. This is my latest account, my PayPal account. You can pay money into here. That's what it's all about. There's no difference between them and what's going on in these crazy uh, uh, black churches especially. They are wax and fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. 
They're outdoing the wicked. Who's that? The Malachi 1 and 4. It's that man, the Edomite, calling himself the white man. It's that devil in the scriptures. And you've overpassed him. They judge not the cause. They cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. They're telling people, come up here, you can pair up, we can get you a, a husband or a wife and all sorts of madness is going on. They're in the total wrong spirit. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely lies and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. They love all the gossip and the madness that's going on. And what will ye do in the end thereof? What gonna, you're going to be destroyed alongside the people you're following. Let's get some more here. Uh, Second Corinthians 11. 3 and 4, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahawashai. Verse 4, for if he that cometh preacheth another Yahawashai whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit. That's what they're coming in. It's another savior. It's another spirit. It's idol worship which ye have not received. Or another gospel which ye have not accepted. Ye might well bear with him. They're doing their own thing. Where are we? Timothy. First Timothy 1. Let's just go from 5 to 7. Now the end of. The commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. From which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling. Swerve. That's not a straight path. That's not a narrow path. No, they're on the wide path to destruction. Desiring to be teachers of the law. Understanding understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm you see they're doing their own thing they're, oh this law is what you've got to follow and the grace of our power the grace that's put to one side it's all hypocrisy let's get something from the apocrypha here sirach let's just get sirach 2 one to five. So people are lost, following down the path, don't want the straight and narrow path. But this says, from starting at one, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. The suffering is coming your way. Set thy heart aright. It's not all, all this uh, uh, joviality and happiness and all this meet this partner over here, marriages and all the rest of it, mixtapes, parties, fashion shows, cookouts. No, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Verse 4, whatsoever is bought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient, when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. The majority of us in Israel, we don't want the adversity. We want it to be permanently good times, good vibes, excitement, music, dancing. Where are we going to get to uh, John? John 15. Let's go from 18, I think. If the world hate you, is all red letter, how was I speaking? Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. 
but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. Some people, they got the name in their mouth, but they're doing opposite to what they're saying. They've got the, they're doing their own thing. It's their own doctrine, their own. They pick and choose what suits them. They don't want the complete, the 100% truth. They don't want it because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. There's no hiding place. Your own thing won't do. This is not your thing. Let's get Hebrews. One of these clowns said, uh, we can't verify who wrote Hebrews. Him in his Greekish fashion hat. Where am I? Hebrews 12, 5 to 8. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. That's to say, you be illegitimate, not belonging. Now the father wouldn't care about you. That's how the, the Edomite, the so-called white man, is being treated. He's just being pushed to one side until the almighty day of judgment. That day of judgment is coming. It's coming. And these people are going to be joined with the Edomite, the white man, and the other nations in the terrible, terrible fury and wrath of the judgment of our power, whose name is Yahweh by Hashem. Yahweh Shai, you're going to get a visitation. Let's get back to Sirach 1. Let's get a few verses here. Let's go from 11 to 14. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart and giveth joy and gladness and a long life. Whoso feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor in the day of his death. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. See that? In the womb, there's no escaping your lot. If you dancing around, prancing around with your own thing, finding you bucking up against the truth and your other brothers. That is your lot. You can't escape it. Let's just get the last reading here. Romans 12, 1 to 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service, that's what you ought to do. There's nothing extra. <clears throat> this is what you ought to do. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. You've got to leave it all behind. You can't take any of it with you. You cannot serve the Most High and man, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Heavenly Father. Verse 3, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as the Most High had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Here we're listening to a prophecy. Concerning the gospel, they are our enemies. Shalom to the next word.